What if I told you that bidding over the asking price for a home could actually make you money in the long run? Does that intrigue you? Well, it should. Welcome back. My name is Darren Hunter. We're going to decode the mysteries of real estate finance and mortgages. And today we're tackling a question that haunts every home buyer in today's competitive market. Should you or should you not bid over the asking price? We're not just going to answer that question. We're going to show you how to turn it into a financial win. So stick around till the end because we're diving deep into the numbers, revealing exclusive data and giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to make this strategy work for you. Trust me, this is the kind of insider information that can turn your home buying experience from a gamble into a complete calculated investment. All right, if you're new to the channel, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. It helps me, uh, certainly I appreciate it. I can't tell you how much, uh, but do me a favor, hit the like and hit that subscribe and let's go ahead and get back on track. All right, so let's take a quick reality check. You've heard the buzz, you've seen the headlines, but what's really going on in the housing market? Is it a buyer's paradise or is it a financial minefield? Let's break it down with some jaw-dropping stats. Okay, first off, home prices are through the roof, literally. Data from Black Knight and Redfin reveal that the median home sales price of a home in July was a staggering 422,000. Yes, you heard that right. So if you're thinking homes are cheap, think again. You may have heard affordability is at an all-time low. It's been in the news a little bit. Now, you might be wondering why are prices so high? So let me introduce you to our next culprit. And this has been in the news quite a few times, low inventory. There's 1.47 million listed for sale right now. And that number actually includes homes under contract. Last time I checked, agents aren't too fired up to take you to a home that's already under contract. So actual homes that are available for you to purchase is closer to 650,000. And that's peanuts compared to what pre-pandemic levels were. So if you're waiting for a housing market crash to swoop in and save the day, don't hold your breath just yet. Some increases in construction activity for sure, but it's not sufficient to reduce home prices significantly. Now, just to make certain everybody understands, I am looking at both sides. There are some cracks that could cause demand to dwindle, like student loan repayments that are starting back October 1st. And even though we, as in mortgage industry folks, we've been taking into consideration the per percentage to count towards the debt to income, it's a little different when you're actually having to make that actual payment. So forking out an extra $400 a month, which is the average student loan payment, may have you thinking twice about buying a new home. Layaway or buy now, pay later stocks like a firm holdings uh, are showing huge increases in profits, which means it's probably a sign that consumers may be feeling the pinch or are still caught up in, in consuming instead of doing without and changing their habits. Credit card debt hitting all-time highs, which means their interest they are paying on debt is as high as it's ever been. And oh yeah, let's not forget, the Federal Reserve is actually trying to increase unemployment. Obviously, a large increase in unemployment could be bad for housing value. And of course, the real monster that's out there, interest rates. Let's not forget about the arch enemy of the housing market, mortgage interest rates. The average 30-year fix is sitting at a whopping 7.5%. That's the highest it's been in two decades. However, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley's, among other, have recently weighed in predicting that although rates are going to dip by the end of the year, they're probably going to dip a little bit more by the end of 2024, but still going to be relatively higher than most people have been accustomed to over the last couple of years. Some of, the, some of the numbers I saw were low fives, and I even saw some numbers in the very high fours. Uh, so again, higher than what many had become accustomed to, but certainly lower than where we're at right now. And that is where we get to really the elephant in the room, the bidding wars. A staggering 38.2% of homes are selling above the list price. So if you're entering the battlefield, you had better come armed. But don't worry, that's exactly what we're prepping you for in this video. All right, so everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss out on the real estate discussions that we have here. 
And today we're diving deep into the topic that's on many people's minds. Should you bid over the asking price when buying a home? I'm going to use a real life example of a home here in Cherokee County, Georgia, which is where I'm located, Woodstock, Georgia, which is just north of Atlanta. So stick around, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. All right, so you found your dream home. The asking price is $459,000. But wait, there's a catch. You're not the only one eyeing this gem. The market is hot and you've got competition. So what do you do? Of course, nobody wants to pay more than a house is worth. And you, you certainly don't want to make a decision based on emotions or at least only on emotions. And, you know, we're talking about primary residence here. If you're, if you're buying an investment property, that's a whole nother story. There should not be any emotions whatsoever. It should be a financial decision. And that is it. And with a primary residence, you know, you already start to move into that property, but you need to make certain if it makes sense. So you need to figure out, does it make sense to bid over asking price to stay competitive and how much? So let's find out. All right, let's talk numbers. You and the family love the house and decide to bid $10,000 over asking price, making your total bid $469,000. But is this a reckless move or a calculated risk? Let's break it down. The historical average appreciation per year for this area is 3.86% and the forecasted average is 3.68. So if you bid 2.1% over asking, you'll break even in just seven months with the appreciation. Mind blowing, right? But let's not just stop there. What will happen over the next five years? At a 3.68 appreciation rate, your home's value could increase by an estimated $91,000. So not only did you break even quickly, but you also stand to make a significant profit in the long run. Remember I mentioned earlier that rates are expected to see a decrease, which will spark demand in an already tight environment. The potential to see even bigger gains is there. Now you'll pay down your mortgage as well, but if you're not aware, mortgages are amortized over a certain term, like 30 years. And this means that you're paying by paying your minimum payment each month you'll make a principal and interest payment on a set schedule. Since banks are in this to make money, the majority of your payment will go towards interest in the beginning. So I'm not really evaluating that a whole heck of a lot. I say this to help you understand that you'll make amortization gains as well, but the bid over ask is about recapturing the money you paid above and beyond the purchase price. Now you might be wondering, how did I get these numbers? Well. I've got the historical and forecasted appreciation rates for every zip code in the US. That's right, we're taking the guesswork out of the, this crucial financial decision. If you found this video helpful and you wanna learn some more, please do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, share a comment. I'm happy to help you on your particular scenario. So put the comment, put the information below and I'll send that information for your specific question. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And all right, folks, that's a wrap for today. Remember, the key to smart home buying is not just following your heart, but also following the numbers. Until next time, keep investing smartly, and I'll see you on the next guaranteed video. Have a great day.